Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR News 4. Game and Friday. <laughs> Game and Friday, indeed, guys. And a fantastic day, 2,500th subscriber. Absolutely amazing, absolutely awesome. It's been a wild ride, guys. Five months of just awesome growth. And I'm enjoying it. You guys seem to be enjoying it. And as long as, uh, you know, it's serving a useful function and I'm enjoying it, we're going to keep doing it. So there you have it. I had an awesome Google Earth VR video. Everything was going on all cylinders. I had it all ready, did my cut, went to check, and basically filmed 15 minutes of black screen because I'd been recording the non-focus window. So yeah, we're going to try that again. We're going to repeat uh, the Google Earth VR video attempt today. Hopefully have that out. Also had an issue with counterfeit where I was zoomed in way too close and it was basically colored pixels moving with my voice over top, which wasn't serving up anything good. All right, now this... Next one might be a little touchy, a little strong, but I can certainly understand the sentiment. Now, this is Upload VR doing a review on the Martian VR experience. And the author, I thought, summed it up pretty nicely when he said uh, the $20 for a 15 to 20 minute experience amounts to an intergalactic ripoff. And I would certainly say it uh, smacks of being opportunistic. Uh, Smacks of? <laughs> absolutely. Uh, possibly stronger. Uh, would I call it a ripoff? You know what? It certainly kind of borders into that territory. And uh, like I said, I understand where Upload VR is coming from. There's time and places for short experiences. And I think if you're setting something up, like the Ghost and Goblins is a perfect example of that. You're setting something up you release it as free, it sets up an expectation of what is to follow. I get that. That can be short and powerful. But best of all, it was free. <laughs> and if you're going to charge, it should be f at least somewhat appropriate. And is $20 for a 15, because I think the 20 minute is being generous, for a 15 minute experience, is that fair? I mean, ultimately the consumer decides what's fair. And if they sell thousands, well, they may continue to think that's fair and that's the way of the world, right? But I highly suspect that will not be the case. They're not going to move too many of the Martian VR experiences at uh, 20 US. Next up, uh, viewer XLord B um, brought this to my attention. I hadn't heard of this. It's a game called Neptune Flux. It's from Zoxide Games. It's available for both Vive and the Rift. Released today, currently discounted, $11.99 US, you can find it. It's uh, described as a story-driven open-world adventure that puts you in control of an underwater colonization specialist as she attempts to discover the cause of underwater surges that are disrupting her work. Use your dive pod to collect items, complete tasks, and unravel the deep sea mystery so it all sounds very good how it is we will find out because this is on my list uh to try and if it's good i will well even if it isn't i'll probably include it as a as a quick look uh definitely now let's get into the news and this uh this next story was a lot of times when you get the talk show hosts doing you know the popular topics it can come across as either you know maybe a little little too pandering or a little too cheesy. I thought Conan O'Brien trying the VR, uh, and I agree with Polygon.com, was funny as hell and glorious would certainly describe it. Have a look. I've included the link, guys. Uh, and watch Conan O'Brien. He tries stuff from Job Simulator. So he does the office job, and it's the, you know, the usual kind of uh, sarcastic, Conan O'Brien style humor, but I think it works here. I think it's funny as hell. Uh, a little bit of background. If you don't know who Conan O'Brien is, he's a talk show host in the US, uh, obviously of Irish descent. And um, yeah, I like his style. He's on cable now, so he can be a lot looser with his topics, 
cursing, cussing, swearing, etc. Uh, more adult focus now that he's, you know, off the network television dial. But uh, the main thing to know about him is he is absolutely not a gamer. Never was, never has been, likely never will be, and it shows. And if you go into these videos watching him knowing that, you're going to get more enjoyment out of it. This is not a guy who knows the first thing about gaming. All right, next up, there is a hack, and this was uh, XLord B when we had our uh, chat today. He brought this to my attention even before I was able to find it online. But Road to VR and other websites have talked about this. There's a hack circulating which will allow Oculus Rift users to load up Google Earth VR. And uh, the, the app is called Fake Vive. But just to mention, and it's a Reddit user, Shockfire7, he developed Fake Vive. Unless you have the touch controllers, it's kind of a moot point. So you can get it to load other than a few key presses. There's not much you're going to be able to do. Now, when the touch is released or if you have development touch devices, if you're a dev who's lucky enough to have more, somehow have pre-release review controllers, you will be able to enjoy it. So a couple of questions arise. The first is, well, this is more a statement. I'm still confident we are going to see an Oculus Rift version. Second of all, when you realize how Revive works, the fact that Steam VR, anything developed in Steam VR, is almost, you know, just by virtue of being programmed on and delivered on Steam VR, ready for either platform, you would think we'd see a lot more cross-platform stuff. And just from a PR point of view, would it not have been better for Google when they released this to say, look, Right now, it's HTC Vive with a few modifications. We're going to do a quick and dirty release for Oculus Rift users, which we will improve over time. That probably would have been a much better angle to come at this than simply releasing it for the Vive. And I say that as a guy who has a Vive. And I think Vive people mostly will probably agree that, you know, politically, it probably would have been a better way to go about it to stay platform neutral. But... For whatever reason, they didn't, and it's done, and it's fine, because we know it's going to work. So if this is something you really want to try, and you only have an Oculus Rift, if you've got touch controllers on the way, you've pre-ordered them, you plan on getting them, this is definitely an experience you will be able to enjoy with a little bit of tweaking. And right now, Fake Vive is just essentially a DLL. You drop it into the application folder, and almost essentially drop and play, so... Next up, we have a V, which is calling itself the Universal Dashboard for VR. It launches open beta. And what this allows you to do is it basically hooks into games that you're playing and allows you to use uh, streaming video media, listen to music while you're playing the game, all those types of things. And a game doesn't have to have code written specifically for it this pretty much universal uh, hook will hook into existing games and allow you to do exactly that pretty much right from the get-go without much modification. So what they say their self, uh, themselves is the app smartly injects itself into most VR games with no special integration needed from the developer. It works like a web dashboard that can be called up at any time inside of VR. You can use it to watch videos, listen to music, and do pretty much anything you might do on the web from within your favorite VR app. And uh, that's Oculus and HTC Vive, the open beta. Next up, Chinese phone manufacturer Pro Truly releases the first 360 degree video capable smartphone. So the phone is actually being called the Pro Truly Darling VR smartphone. Not making this up, guys. This is an actual name. It probably translates quite loosely into English. The actual Chinese name might be a bit stronger and more meaningful, but in English it is Pro Truly Darling VR smartphone. And uh, it has a front and rear wide angle 13 megapixel lens. 
uh, and it's able to stitch footage together to create the 360 content powered by a 2.5 gigahertz MediaTek Helio X20 processor, four gigabytes of RAM, 3560 milliamp battery, and a 5.5 inch AMOLED 1080p display. So very cool, but very much a Chinese only phone at the moment, but probably just a matter of time before we see that type of functionality uh, in phones. It was one of the um, viewers on the channel actually commented, I thought it was a good comment and very apt that what makes the Chinese market so unique is the lack of regulations uh, in a lot of areas. There, there's not a lot of bureaucracy in place. It's pretty much a wild west frontier in terms of tech anyways. And a lot of companies are able to take huge massive risks and be opportunistic because of that which is very cool uh, it can be very dangerous we can have some bubbles burst absolutely but the other side of that coin is what we're seeing with vr where it is literally running rampant um, throughout china which is very cool next one is a bit of a bit of a heebie-jeebie uh, macabre story it's an Italian neurosurgeon, and uh, his name is Dr. Sergio Canavero. So he's from Italy. I think he graduated from the University of Turin, uh, cum laude, I think he was. He wants to do the first head transplant next year. And whatever your stance on the morals uh, or ethical implications of this, the tie into VR is this. He is using virtual reality to prepare the head transplantee, I guess you would call him, with having a new body. So the VR experience is about adapting to a new body. And his thoughts are that if you can prepare the, pac the patient mentally, psychologically, for what's about to happen, i.e. a completely new body from the neck down, it's going to make post-surgical recovery, if they survive, that much better, that much improved, um, physically, psychologically, all aspects. So again, I've got the links, uh, two links I've included. Have a read. Interested in hearing your thoughts on that. Um, Next year, that all goes down. So that VR app is probably being used right now. Next story, Google Expeditions via Google CEO. Uh, he's about to announce an initiative that's going to not only expand their King's Cross campus in the UK, but they plan on bringing Google Cardboard to a million UK school children, which is very, very cool. We've talked so much on this channel about the educational aspect, and I think having that deployed out to children to be able to, I mean, if I was a kid, the Google Earth thing, for example, which I did want to touch on, and I'll touch on that in a second, just an update for you guys on that, aside from the one I already provided, but kids having access to that, you just can't, you can't put a value on that. That is just amazing learning potential and those are experiences that you got to think unless you've got kids who are completely not into that uh, these are experiences they are going to remember their entire lives because they are going to be powerful pivotal moments right trying the vr on you know again trying something like google earth vr from space literally going into your hometown it's a pretty powerful thing which brings me to the thing that I wanted to mention is it's the human scale somebody told me about because I was getting that warped, melted candle view. Apparently human scale actually activates the street view. So you get the actual, you know, photographic uh, view of the street, your house, etc. Not the melted Nintendo 64 texture style. So there you have it, guys. That is it for the news today. As always, cheers. And thank you very much, guys. Cheers. Definitely catch you on the VR flip side.